We are live. I can't even really say welcome to the replay because we have people waiting already for the live show. Can you guys hear me? Please say hello and just let us know that you can hear us. There's some hair challenges today. Wow. What's going on there? Um, hello, everybody. Please let me know if you can hear us. I did not do an audio I, test. I can hear you. You can hear me. I know, but that's okay. Hello, Kathy Lee, who's reading. Robert said two Hello, Kathy minutes Lee. Minutes is forever. Kathy Good. Lee, thank you for calling today with that excellent information. By the way, Kathy, I want to tell you something. After that 45 or 6 call that you made to I us, love you too, oh my God, it's blowing up today with SBA 45 or 6 fails. We're going to talk about fails. that. Fails. We're going to talk about that. Okay. So um, basically what we're going to be talking about this evening, did I just like wipe my lipstick all over the place? Um, I didn't touch it. We're going to be, mm, we're going to be talking about some behind the scenes and these just disclaimer, we don't know anyone there. We just talk to a bunch of people every single day on real case files. So we kind of have a little bit of insight plus a little, this guy a little? with 30 years of, of mortgage. Insight. 30 years of government loans and 30 years of federal bureaucracy. So he's been able to take that process or that Zen to apply it's not it. Zen. There's nothing Zen about it. Well, okay. So there's, there's nothing, nothing zen. zen about it. It's more like a particle collider. Luis Mancayo. The particle collider that's smashing things. Oh, Hello, Luis. Theodore. Luis, you're going to love. You're going to love. Harry Lazaros. Can, can I talk? No. Luis, you're going to love what we're talking about tonight because uh, since you and I spoke yesterday, Luis, you cannot believe the day I've had today with the SBA, which continues up until about a half hour ago and probably will continue after the show. But we'll get to that in a moment. Linda Ray, okay, now you can no, see how I didn't interrupt you. Okay, look. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm so happy to say hello to. So, yes, Robert, I know a guy. <laughs> So um, we're going to start with our, hello, it's WTF Wednesday, now known as Where's the Funding? It used to be WTF, we know what that means, right? But uh, too we relevant. Do? WTF. Where's the fudge? Fudge? Who, we, are, is there fudge? Why the face? Why the face? <laughs> All right, so some SBA uh, behind the scenes. And I think we already have a question coming in. I, I, I see you, David. And um, I see you, David, and I raise you. Yes, I asked Joan. Okay, we're gonna talk. To, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, first, Trevor, let's start with uh, the fact that you have thirty years. Blah blah blah. Um, oh, the, oh, the, we're gonna go right to the boring part. Of we're the gonna show. get the boring part out of the way so we can do our Q and A. So this is the boring, not controversial not sensational part of the show. If this is the part where you need to go to the kitchen and like, I don't know, change the ice cube tray or something, it might be a good time to do that. Uh, so what we wanted to talk about tonight is that we want you to understand essentially what's happening behind the scenes at the SBA to help all of you manage your own expectations, to help you find deeper levels of Zen patience, which we are always preaching here on our show. And, um, so let me kind of give you start with a story from from 1989 1990 my first full year in the mortgage business and um this is pre-internet pre-computers we still use giant actuarial calculators with a giant handle you'd pull it down it would print out a little tape with the apr the annual percentage rate and truth and lending all that stuff and at one point along my travels of working in as a loan officer i discovered that uh instead of mailing the loan, the, the whole loan package with the appraisal, the verifications, the pay stubs, the bank statements, everything, that I could hand deliver this from my office in Long Island to 26 Federal Plaza in Manhattan to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Federal Housing Administration office, where the two FHA underwriters who were the only FHA underwriters for all of downstate New York were there to approve the FHA mortgage loans. And this is prior to the days, which would come later, that banks like ours would get what's called a direct endorsement certification that our own underwriter could sign up. So the uh, the government was underwriting loans. I so probably I discovered attention. this and I went into 26 Federal Plaza 
And I used to deliver my files on a fairly regular basis. And I came to learn there were two offices. On, on one side was a guy named Howard. And on the other side was a woman named Ann. Now, they're both federal government employees, and they're working in a giant federal bureaucracy, very similar to the SBA. And their responsibility is to approve mortgage loans using federal guidelines, working within a federal government office and government framework. And I came to learn pretty quickly that if my file went into Ann's office, it was like the black hole in a science fiction movie. On the other hand, if my file went into Howard's office, not that I ever got preferential treatment at all, but Howard was a kind, friendly guy. And I will just say the experience of loans in those two side-by-side -side federal underwriters, you could put the same loan in front of both of them and come out with a completely different result and a completely different timeline. Were drinks involved? Never. In fact, <laughs> you know, I was not even allowed to bring coffee because you cannot hand anything to a federal employee in that situation because it's potentially an inducement and that's illegal, Ooh. massively illegal, even a cup of coffee. But so I learned that early on and early I, on. I share this with you because I want you to understand. Are you making a face? Yes. We did say this was going to be the boring part of the show. All right. Well, do something to make it not. No, this no, boring. no. It's going to be boring Okay. because while everyone, all of you out there are freaking out and somebody in this house put a poll online last night. Oh, yeah. You want to share the poll? I'm afraid if I share the poll, I'm going to drop it. Okay. Everybody. Well, short version of her poll. Which is poll to be exact? She said, what, what do you think is the problem with the EIDL program? Is it because the SBA oh. is massively... Uh, the SBA is massively screwed up or because business owners make mistakes. And 70% of people responded that it's all the SBA's fault. And I'm here to tell you tonight, it's not. Okay. It's not the SBA's fault I as much I as the SBA is a federal bureaucracy. And you've got to understand that. And you have to understand your loan is there with millions. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Right of here. Of other loans. Okay. This is it right here. Um do you think the I, SBA, I, okay? Do, what you didn't want it? Well, I already capped it, so I don't know. Okay. We already did it. Okay, so here's here's the key essence of what I need all of you to understand. The COVID nineteen pandemic is like no other economic disaster since the Great Depression of the nineteen thirties. Okay, these times are unprecedented for the SBA, which has been around for seventy years. You have a small staff relative to the volume of business that has come in the door at the SBA since last year. And you add that all of your own idiosyncrasies of your situations with your loans. But here's the real issue that I want you to understand, which is not necessarily that this is a federal bureaucracy. It's how mm -hmm. things work in a financing organization. So a good friend of mine, um, Janice, uh, who was my loan processor and ultimately my underwriter at a couple of different mortgage companies for many years, um, she works now for a giant bank whose name we will not mention. And Janice has shared with me that in her program there, her boss has deadlines for Janice to complete files and not just deadlines, but quotas, certain number of files every day, every week, every month. And if you're not hitting your numbers, there's problems, there's serious consequences, negative consequences for her. She's an underwriter who approves loans. They have a system. It's called the bucket system. So you've got loans in your bucket and they've got to be moved. The bucket has to move through the system into the bigger bucket. Okay. Please understand that's what's going on behind the scenes at the SBA. So you've got the overwhelming challenge of the COVID, the overwhelming number of loan applications. You have a federal bureaucracy, which works a certain way, and it's rather starchy and very okay. stiff. Then, okay. No, no, no this nope. was, no. Nope. Okay, now I've lost my track. Thanks a lot. We have banners. Okay. I don't want banners. <laughs> federal, federal bureaucracy. Um, oh, bucket. 
So you've got this limited staff, which is not always the best trained staff at the SBA because they've been thrown into this mix of things that they've got to do for you all to get you this EIDL loan. And their supervisors are saying, you've got to clear a certain number of files today. We know from a conversation we had with an SBA attorney, he said, quote, I have 1,500 files. Yeah. That's one. Can you imagine 1,500 files? How, you, mm -hmm. When are you sleeping? Okay. Yeah. If you saw the so, poll, just type in yes in the comments. If you saw the poll, uh, I'll put the link. Okay. I'm almost done. I promise. Okay. So you've got a supervisor telling you, move your file, th your bucket, get it done, clear files off your desk. And in your situation with an overwhelming number of files, you're an employee at the SBA, you got an overwhelming number of files. Maybe you're not the best trained employee. So you're trying to guess things maybe or try to figure stuff out and file but you don't have a lot of time to figure things out on files you don't have a lot of time to write complete e and, and nicely wrote written emails you don't have time to properly complete a 4506 or to make other assessments Luis such as a DBA and an LLC are not the same thing or such as your 4506 is incorrectly filled out Kathy Lee and etc cetera, etc cetera. Because the SBA agent is pressed massively for time. Yeah. Clear the file off the desk. And because it's a federal system, they don't really have a lot of options. They're not calling you up to say, hey, there's a mistake. Yes. Can you explain this to me? No. Declined. Yes, yes. Now, something else we've come to discover over the last few days, their systems, the SBA agents cannot always open PDFs that you have submitted. That might explain why you've been asked for a 4506T 17 times or why your driver's license that you uploaded into the portal is showing as incorrect in the portal. I have experienced this myself. I know that when I upload documents, they are perfect. And I use Adobe Acrobat, not Microsoft PDF, not Apple. All right. So I know it's not, not my, my end. You're a loan officer. You're pressed for time. You can't open the PDF. You know what you do? You don't send an email to the applicant. You don't have time. What you do is you put onto the portal, incorrect. Or you yes. just say, send me another 4506T. Because the, the is yeah, we had someone are, who, do, are you seeing where I'm going with this this story about what's happening with all of your files? Yes. At the SBA. This is why I want you to understand this process so you can find. You need to find literally infinite amount of patience with this. We and when they say to you, to 40 gallons to when they minute. say to you, as we just had somebody who asked a question um, a few minutes yes. before the show, yes. his his or her story explains everything you need to know about yes. your story and yes. general stories with SBA. And my answer that Linda typed here while I ate ice cream, actually, I was eating well, really some, good some ice Arthur cream. Miller ice cream. Uh, my answer was basically, listen, if they ask for a document, send it in again. Well, this is okay. Are you done, loan officer, dude? Are you done? Not really, but okay. okay. Well, you're gonna have more opportunity. Don't worry. You I get to talk more. You're not. Yes, you will be. But you know, the poll that I had that I did, and we have 91% that says the SBA is massively flawed. Now, first of all, we don't represent the SBA. We're not. We don't defend the SBA. We're just as bleep at the SBA. But I just would love to know. Because out how many people we speak to on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and people that hire us, they admit saying, I don't I did it wrong, like, or I don't know how to do it, or I sent it in and I'm not hearing anything. So we we don't hear from the people that are standing on ceremony with it's the SBA's fault. I don't know, because I did everything perfectly now the sba isn't perfect either but the thing is you not know, a lot of people can make that statement i can make that statement what that the sba is not perfect no that i i did it perfectly oh i do you want to tell them about I what, what it looks like what yeah, my thank you tony looks like? i think tony has been here before saying hey can you let her talk no tony yeah. no tony tonight was supposed to be my show <laughs> tough Tough. But but yeah, Frank O. Oh, oh, tough Frank. acorns, Tony. Oh, Frank. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. You nailed it, Frank. That's it. But listen, if Congress did that, it's too late. <laughs> we are in the middle of it, and the the fact is that the um, I'm a Batman fan, Kathleen. Not not super. Well, she's trying to convert not, you. Not ever super. Not can't can't happen. 
my friend Eliza, who's a massive all right, Superman can we talk, fan, can all right, let, let's talk about, I, th I think we talked about, but the processing, the typical processing system, uh, which is, what do we have here? The borrower application is submitted, application assigned to the processor. Well, we don't know how it works at the SBA. Well, I'm just going and on. And as, as an these SBA the loan agent said to me this morning, when I asked a question, a general question, I said, it can, you know, we were talking about a file. And I said, generally speaking, when I submit this particular document, it looks like your colleagues are not reading it, blah, blah. Well, he said, you know. Oh, yes, yes. He said, you got to understand something, he said. I'm working from home. Wait a minute. Does that sound familiar, folks? Yeah. COVID? How many of you are working from home with kids, dogs, bunnies, canaries, Mm -hmm. Amazon deliveries, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. And you're trying to work remotely. Oh, and internet connections are failing. Yes, Rev. Okay, internet connections are failing and you're exhausted and so forth. Well, the SBA agents are also working from home and have been for a year. So that was the first thing he moment for me to share with you all tonight. And then he said, there's a lot of different areas here at the SBA. And as soon as he said that, that resonated with me because that was my experience dealing with the Veterans Administration. You have an appraisal review department that doesn't necessarily always speak to the underwriting or the credit department, federal bureaucracy. He said a lot of different areas. And sometimes he said, and I quote, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Mm, he said that and he works there. Now, I'm not sharing with this with all of you because I want you to be more angry with the SBA. I'm sharing it with you to have more empathy and more patience. Which is a big ask. We know this. It's a big ask. You know, our it, it, we've been going live since... Like, well, just mainly, we were. Well, I've been going live since the late 70s. We, yes, playing music. But we actually were going live last year up until Christmas, but we weren't going live at night. So we weren't really reaching people in the same way. And we've been going live for about a month and a half, two months at this hour, 7 30 p.m. Phil, Eastern Standard Time, by the way. And um, we've been very, like, we go on, off, up, down, in, out, you know, because. Sometimes we're pissed at the SBA because it's so wow. And then other times we're like, we see too many mistakes being made. So we're also kind of like on the other side of it with the business owners. So before we get to the question and answers, yeah, I'm going to really make all of you very excited right now because I am calling the SBA. Why? Live on the show. No. Oh, oh come yes, on. I am. I don't want to be that show. I am. Please. No, it's, I'm not going to put this on speakerphone. Uh, I just want you to hear how I speak to the SBA if this is helpful to all of you. I, this okay. is not helpful to me because I hear it. Okay. Can we just start seeing the dips in the views because people are logging off right now? They're looking because I'm a handsome guy. Hi, good afternoon, and thanks so much for being there today. Um, could I have extension 4139, please? I'm going to really apologize right now. Ow. <laughs> no. We're going to get to the questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Walter, good afternoon. My name is Trevor Curran with Aurora Consulting in Connecticut. How are you tonight? I'm great. I want to thank you for being there. Um, we are an authorized representative for a client that you called this afternoon in San Diego. I actually, I thought I was going to get your voicemail and I would leave you a message. Um, I want to be able to send you an email so that you, we can send you our authorization letter and also catch you up to speed on any documents you need for the client. Um, can I get your email address so I could send you that email? I'm sorry. I can't control it. Wait, 
Great. That's what I thought it was. Um, we are a small financing brokerage. I'm a veteran 30 year mortgage banking loan officer, and we've been helping over 150 small businesses since March of last year. Um, we really appreciate that you're there doing what you're doing. And actually the client I'm calling you about is actually the very first client that asked us to do this last year. So you're working on his increase. I'll send you an email this evening to introduce myself and then maybe we can chat again tomorrow and I'll get you all the documents you need, Walter. All righty. Thanks so much. You have a wonderful evening, sir. All the best. You're welcome. Uh, was, was One that, minute and 58 seconds. You see, folks, how easy that is? Was that it's as painful for you guys as it was piece for me? Piece of cake. I, that is how I speak to a colleague. This is every day I'm dealing with times. Gene I mean, Savage what, will like wash hands. 50, 55 times Gene, a day. What, what? what does that mean, Gene? Because you just called the SPA. Okay. No, that means so, no. I can think, we get I, Tony? Say, I see you. I see your question. Gene, um, I want to know. I, you and Maureen were were at Darlington, I think, on your NASCAR tour. That was boss. Thanks for sharing. All that. right. So I, I I did a ton of banners that I mean I'm just gonna I'll put them up randomly. I I don't even know if they're gonna like match with whatever we're talking about. But um, can we just go to Q and A because that is. <laughs> Michael, I mean, it was riveting, wasn't it? <laughs> that was some powerful stuff right there. All right. I really, I wanted to share with all of you how easy it really is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think everyone is like, WTF, where's the funding? All right. So Q&A time. Let's go. I'm going to go to the top two of my okay. comments. Blocks. Let's go to where's the funding. I want to say one last thing before we go to the, the uh, lightning round of questions. Lightning round. I have to find. A couple of days ago, David, um, David. I was going through emails from one of our early days clients. This is a client who wants a little convenience grocery restaurant type store near Boston. And he was probably, I don't know, the seventh or eighth or 10th client who hired us last year. We got him funded last year for EIDL. We got him funded last year for PPP. Um, we did PPP again for him this year. And um, we're working on his increase request this year. Now, as I was going through some of his old emails from last year, uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, what did I see? I saw this fellow sending me emails every day, multiple times a day. And the emails read a lot like this. A few of you may recognize the tone of these emails. And here's how they read. Did you hear anything yet? Did you call the SBA today? Do you think I'm going to get approved for the loan? When do you think this is going to be approved? What's the next step? What should I expect? When do you think I'll get the funding? Okay. When is this going to happen? Can I call? Can I call you? Can I? And by the way, that's just the email. Yeah. I also had text messages and emails from okay. my client. And what I'm telling you is this: He got his money. There was a process, and he got his money. All right. You got your money. This Hang is, in there. This because is because everybody has the same anxiety. Be me. Calling Walter at the SBA, all mellow and zen. Listen, I'm the producer of this show, and now I am stepping in because you are just out of control. Let's get to David because this is still along the lines. You I see, don't know how to I'm answer your question, pleaser. David. What do you mean? So I don't know what it is you're looking to accomplish by calling the SBA. Why are you calling the SBA? What does you need to know? Can you give us that in the comments? And Linda can put that up as a banner, and I'll answer that question. All because right. What I see here is. Next time I call, what do you recommend I request? I don't know what it is you're, you're looking to accomplish. Jason wants to know if you ordered the pizza when you were on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony, uh, this is what I'm not understanding. Why is it the people who... This is not true, Tony. Not true uh, at all. Are they not looking at the schedule? So I was on, a, on a, one of our free 15-minute consultations this morning with a young man, and... Um, he has, he got funded um, in January for his EIDL loan. He's working on his increase and he's done everything. He's hit all the points, all the markers. And he then said to me, I said, so what is the purpose of the call to us that you want me to help you with? He said, well, I'm stuck. 
Oh, yes, 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 I yes, said, yes. you're not stuck. You're not stuck. Yeah. And I basically said this, okay. a lot of the same thing I said to you. I spoke to a woman in Chicago today who said, well, you know, there's 28 million tax returns that are backed up at the IRS. I said, how did you get that number? Because I'm pretty sure the IRS is not out there telling people we're backed up by 28 million, 713.4. The IRS doesn't do that. Okay. They're getting that from some sensational person. And here's what I want to say. No, the, here's what I'm going to say. All right. This was supposed to be my show. No, too. it's not. Because Tony said so. <laughs> Tony said I'm in this show too. What I said to both of those folks is this. But you said you're still talking. Because oh I want to get to my point is this. If people are distressed, they're shouting it from the mountaintops. Oh People with good news are not talking about it. Yes. So, Tony, when you say there's all this fraud, this is yes. not true. I have read the Office of Inspector General's report. The fraud is this tiny percentage relative to all of you. It's a tiny group of criminals. Look, Ben's trying to but you hear down. about the criminals. All right. So this is this is the other thing. And if it bleeds, I, it leads. I hate even piggybacking off of this whatever's going on over here with this rant. But I think what is going on. Uh, is that people, when they hear a outrageous story that is so sensationalized, they actually go into that it's a, that it's to their Oh, loan. that's good. That's a good vision. Uh, well, you know, I had to wait 26 minutes to make it. But yeah, so then they go in and they it's like just their loan. It applies to them. And it doesn't mean that that's the case. I think people have to get out of their own way and just take a deep breath and you know uh, and you know with these situations too we can't even say you know you need maybe do a little bit more research because the research is getting everyone in what, trouble with the panic it is what the young man this morning when he said he was stuck what he said to me is you know i hear all these people are getting declined i said what people yeah well you know I, i'm reading about all these people i go yeah because the people who are freaking out the people who are anxious people who have bad news are sharing it. See, I learned this lesson when I worked in customer service back in the you 80s. You have to get to the questions. The folks in the 80s, you learned pretty quickly that the people who were the wackadoodles, the people who had all the bad complaints, they're the ones who shout the loudest. The customers who were satisfied yeah. don't say that. Yeah. They don't say, hey, I had a very good experience. Let me write a letter to the office of the president. Nobody does that because right. people expect that. Okay, so just got my call today. I don't have eighty percent of the loan and renters insurance. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Life roller. You just yeah. Roll insurance with, broker. Roll with life. Okay, life it's roller. now the Linda show. Yeah, Go. don't worry about it. We have it as uh, long as it has the property coverage. Yeah, as long as it has the property coverage slash contents. You know, property equals contents equals personal property on a business policy. As long as there's property coverage. We have it not only being told to us, but we have it in writing uh, in an email for a client where it says, we're not looking at the amount of the coverage. And I'm going to explain this for, for, for you guys that are still with us uh, because there wasn't actually a really nice exchange I had with a couple of, with a couple of guys with this insurance and the couple of guys. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Chicka bow bow. <laughs> Uh, so they were talking about how the loan agreement says, you know, about collateral and insurable value and all of that. But please remember this. This agreement was written for a natural disaster. And with the natural disaster, the damage was property damage, the roof, siding on a house, the garage or whatever other uh, you know, structures that were damaged Potential, from a but storm, not, but not always. Okay, but not always. I mean, there's loss of revenue with whatever, but for the for the most part, historically speaking, these EIDL loans, the amount of the loans were based on the amount of the repairs that had to be done to a physical structure. Now, yes, there's a business close and the economic injury from the loss of income, but okay, put that aside. The reason the collateral comes up is because they were able. They they fixed the house. They loaned the money for because business of, for, or the business. But there's also houses. The, but we don't we talk do about, business. We don't talk about houses. We here. Do, but the loan agreement is talking about a natural disaster, whereas COVID is an economic disaster. So I think the only thing that the SBA has done to pivot in a direction that makes it a little bit more um, feasible for borrowers slash business owners to meet these requirements is to 
let some things go by the wayside. Like, okay, you have insurance with property. Co Don't interrupt me. You have insurance that has property coverage. If it's homeowners or renters or business insurance, and it's not to 80% of the insurable value or 80% of the collateral. Stop. My God. Me you are such a drama queen. Totes. So totally. Yeah. So don't. So life roller. Just roll with it. Don't worry about it. Just get your insurance that has property. If you work from home, homeowners or renters. If you have a business policy and you don't have property, Zoe, you Zoe knows. If you don't have property, call your agent and ask for a quote for a minimum amount of property coverage and add it to your business policy. Out. You cannot get the increase without the insurance, folks. Yes. It does not matter the loan size. You cannot get the increase without the insurance. Period. Okay. So here's David. He's back with I just wanted to talk to a loan agent about my loan increase. Why did you want to talk to? She said my loan was being pro I thought it Okay, would be I can answer this okay. now, David. So thank you for okay. being more thank specific because the specific is terrific. David goes in. What you want, David, is you want an answer on your status of your loan. You're not going to get that answer. If you get an answer, it is not going to satisfy your intense curiosity. Binge watch The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. It's fantastic. Do that instead. Go for a long walk in the country. Uh, Brandon. You are not going to get the answer you want. Wait. Folks, if you are waiting for your increase, wait longer. It's coming. Yes. Let It has only been 36 days. 36 days. All right, April 6th, the announcement. Brandon, can you just say what, I, I don't know what you mean by what's not true. What did we say that you are disagreeing with? Would love to hear that. You're wrong, Brandon. I'm sorry, you are wrong. Read your loan agreement, sir. You can get 25,000 or under without coverage. You have to have the insurance. It is a requirement. Read your loan agreement. It says you must have insurance. Even for under 25? The loan agreement says you must have insurance. Uh, Don't make me go get my laptop and read a loan agreement to all. Well, of you then here. this is, is this just is this you not... all are confusing collateral with insurance. Oh. oh, okay, okay, that's fair. By the way, Brandon, literally the worst thing you can ever do is sell, tell me something's not true that I have just said out loud. Oh no, you missed the call, Phil. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, Phil, the fact that it was denied, this goes back to what I was saying a few minutes ago about <laughs> the um, the process at the SBA and the pressure these agents are under. You are declined probably for some kind of technical issue. It's going to work out. File your reconsideration. File it, watch our playlist of YouTube videos on how to file a reconsideration um, or hire us to do it, but file your reconsideration. You will be successful. Okay. Uh, okay. So you got to put, so heard that that's the big question on when will the funding, nobody Can't knows, answer. nobody knows. The SBA doesn't even know. We have um, another, another post on the community tab of our channel here has exactly the conversation. She actually transcribed the conversation because it was 15 seconds. What was said, what was asked and what was said with the SBA agent and they don't know when the funding will happen. Either. By the way, I just want to point out what Heard says, I got approved and no insurance and signed docs today. First of all, I don't know what documents you signed. I don't know if that's your closing documents or if it's your 4506 that you signed and you think that's your closing documents. I don't know if you think you were approved when in fact you were eligible because I've been doing this all week with clients going into the portal and we have been docu-signing clients documents and which is just the 4506 and we have been accepting eligibility. Okay. Um, read your loan agreement. It says you are required to provide insurance. If your loan officer approved you and let the insurance slide yes you're going credit. to have to well there okay could oh, be. wait we're not 
All okay, right, let's sorry, be clear, sorry. folks. If you're going to ask about credit tonight, and if they're going, <laughs> it's not. We're going. I'm will slap sh this iPad shut. We are not going to answer these questions. Please don't even put them out. I'm not kidding. Like I'm, de I'm tired of you hearing. You didn't this see our show last week about. We're the not going to answer these questions. Honestly, they're stupid questions. You, if you are applying for a loan, folks, expect that the okay, lender okay. will run a credit report. All right. Listen, we already talked. We actually put up a bunch of videos. I have a whole playlist on credit. They check credit. We I'm don't Batman. we don't know if it's under 25 or we don't know if it's at the increase. We don't know if it's a month from now, if it's eight months from now, if they'll you know it it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's see some other questions. If they check it, let's they see, check let's it. Let's move on and see some other questions. Okay. Uh oh, Zoe, what happened to Zoe? Got a call from a loan officer today regarding verbal agreement on increase. I immediately <laughs> went to when Zoe, we were funded, you. but I'm guessing I love Zoe. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, that's a perfectly reasonable question, but listen, even but they when, don't know, right? Okay. So here's the thing. Even when I was a mortgage banker, if, if I called you and said, Hey, Zoe, congratulations. Don't you don't have to apologize, Brandon. I know you're not being difficult. Um, I, we are, we're just very passionate about these things. And we, we answer a lot of these comments on our YouTube channel. We try to be, well, actually she does. I, the, the only time I comment on almost every single, well, I, I answer every single question. If there's a comment, I like it. I heart it. I may not respond to it because they're just updating maybe something very, you know, courtesy. Linda tries update. to interact. And when I'm on Facebook, I try to answer a lot of questions on Facebook. Um, Robert, you're correct. They're not being hard on, they're not standing on the ceremony in the 80%, but you do have to have property coverage. This is a, this is a common thing going on with the targeted advance and the bank accounts. Um, okay. We have limited experience i folks I, we can't really answer questions on targeted advance yeah that's we don't we don't we just don't know we don't handle a lot of the targeted advance we've submitted a bunch of applications for clients nobody's only one two three or four people have been approved and um we can't really help with those um i think jay davis it's because they did ask for it on the first loan actually they but asked he also for had 12 months right didn't you have okay, up can to i can i finish it's a it sucks not being able to talk. It's a right? federal document, Jay Davis. <laughs> and so uh, the federal government assumes that when you sign the closing document, that you are reading the entire closing document. And there is a paragraph in there that says you are required within 12 months to provide insurance. Uh, so they had a glitch. Yeah. Those glitches are happening are as we they're, speak. They're epic. It's epic. And it's a okay. Can we okay. let's Robert mentions 4506T. Tell him, Linda, what's been going on all day today with 4506Ts. Oh, okay. um, oh boy, I'm gonna sit back and watch this one because this is gonna be good. No, it's not, it's not gonna be not good, good because good. I only know I have very limited information that the the SBA, and this is another reason why you don't defend the SBA. The SBA is sending pre-filled forms with incorrect information. Incorrect. They are massively, sending massively, massively. So the incorrect. only thing we can say to that is don't sign anything they send as yep. incorrect. Fill out a blank form and send I your, sure, send it into the PDC. Recon. I am sure that everyone has a library of all the bleeping forms that the SBA requires because they've been asking for them and re-asking for them and then asking them for them again and then asking again. Okay. 4506T is a major problem happening right now at the SBA. Uh, going back to what I said, thanks, Zoe, you are correct. Uh, what I said before about you've got overwhelmed agents working on hundreds or maybe thousands of files piled on the debt. They're working remotely. They have supervisors breathing down their necks to make deadlines and clear a certain number of files every day and every week. All right. They are filling out these 4506Ts very quickly mm -hmm. and they're making a lot of mistakes we had yeah. several instances today with clients uh, with the 4506t that was on the portal mm -hmm. was completely incorrect we had one instance today where an sba agent called and said i don't understand the income is seventeen thousand dollars but you put one hundred eighty six thousand dollars on the application i just got the transcripts back from the irs and it says seventeen thousand what's the reason for this discrepancy and when i looked at it i said i looked at the file on my computer, this was a file like client number three or four from last year. I looked at it. I said, "Wait a minute, the seventeen thousand is is his personal tax return." 
Hi, Tony. But you should have requested a tax transcript for the business, which is what we applied for, and the business earned one hundred eighty-six thousand. Oh, so they are rushed. They are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and other things. Don't assume they've got your documents in the file. If they ask you for it, send it in. Yeah. So for sole props, uh, renters insurance or homeowners insurance. If you work from home, we had a we had a lot of questions. We had a lot of questions for Uber, Lyft, and gig workers. And um, you know, even if you are driving a car, you probably do some work for your business when you're not driving. So I'm not saying exclusive twenty one nineteen that that you're Uber and Lyft. I'm just saying freelancers, self employed. You you you're being too gen too. Uh, specific. Let's be very generic because it's a federal program. Basically, the SBA assumes if you are a sole proprietor, generally speaking, you're working from home. You're a carpenter and you go out and you build uh, cowboy Western towns for cowboy movies. OK, so you're in Hollywood, you got an apartment in Hollywood and you drive out to the desert and you build things. Right. But where do you get the phone call for your business? You get it while you're at home. You check stuff on your Internet at home. So even though you're working out in the desert building old Western towns for cowboy movies, the fact is you're sole proprietor, Schedule C, you work from home, show your renter's insurance. Listen, so Brandon and heard that, you you guys, if you don't, if you're That's gonna get, great. Yeah. Take it. Do, do it. Then don't worry about it. That, see, this is the other thing. I think there are people, and you, you mentioned this weeks ago, where there's so much anecdotal you know, discussions going on, like, hey, what did you have to do that? Or did you did you did, did you hear and that we this, say just do know, it just either just do it or don't do it. In this case, you don't need insurance. Fine. But it you know, it doesn't. By the way, Brandon, I just want to tell you what the process is for you to expect. Yes. Right now, Brandon, the loan officer is working on your file and collecting documents. The loan officer deems necessary to move you forward to the uh, closing stage. But guess what happens next? Your file goes to the legal department for review, and that is where you're going to get a bounce back. So get ready for it and get your insurance. You have to have the insurance. It's in your loan agreement, and they're enforcing it. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> we were arguing. Sorry, Dan. All right. So, um, yeah. So, see, Michael knows. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Um, I don't think we had any other questions that I could see or that I read. So I uh, just want to say thank you, everybody. It's been, you know, people are exhausted and the confusion continues and we see it every single day. Uh, I mean, this hazard insurance just in this this show right here tonight is a perfect example of the you know, confusion. Is it, do we need it? Do we not need it? Is it over 25? Is it under 25? If you get a loan officer, this is the other thing, loan officers, it, it could be a hit or miss. Some of them make up their own rules as they go along. So, you know, if you have someone who's asked you for insurance and your loan's under 25,000, that loan officer wants the, they want insurance in the file. That's, and if they don't, then they don't ask for it. So there you go. You got lucky. Maybe, I don't know. Somebody got lucky. Maybe somebody didn't get lucky. So um, here's the thing. What we're telling you is it's required. And so you should have it at the ready because if they ask you for it and you don't have it, you're going to be delayed even further. So yeah. if you, you listen, everybody can stand on ceremony and say, but Trevor, I got it. I got the loan without the insurance. Great. Ever other people can say, the loan officer told me I don't need it. Great. If you close and you get your funding without providing insurance, good for you. We're happy. We're not arguing with you for the purpose of saying you can't. That's not possible. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is we know that they are standing on it and they want it. So get it ready so that so, you can submit it. Yeah. See, now we're, we're going into all kinds of insurance. Renters insurance Brandon for your apartment. Brandon is saying you can't get it as gig workers. What we're saying, what we were told... Well, we were told that it doesn't mean it means that whoever we spoke to and on a couple of different occasions, they said, if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, they'll take renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance. Because so, they consider you to be a home based business, a home based business. And if so, you're a gig worker, it's the same. It's the thing. same thing. So if Brandon heard that uh, we have another uh, Uber driver 
over here and then Michael Bowens. If you guys are gig workers and you leave your house to do a job, but you then come back to your house and maybe you do some bookkeeping, maybe you answer some calls, maybe you, maybe you schedule some appointments. You probably, if you, if you don't have an office, you're doing that from home. I'm just guessing. Or read well, between not the guessing. lines. Or I'm, read between the lines. I'm not guessing. If I'm you telling you home, what you the SBA's the SBA's interpretation of your situation is. You are considered to have a home office, and it doesn't matter whether you claim it on your tax or not. If you have Schedule C, they want to see insurance. So, real, real J Rock. Uh, that's a great question. So. Proof of insurance for business equipment. If you have a if you have a business policy, then yes, you're going to want to put uh, business equipment slash property on your business insurance. If you have renters insurance and you only have liability, you'll want to call your agent or your company and get contents coverage. That's property. If you own a home, I don't know what state you're in, but I can tell you in the tri-state area. Contents is a percentage of the dwelling value. If you have homeowners insurance, they will take that. So property coverage, hazard insurance, contents, equipment, those are all property coverages. That's what they're looking for is property insurance. Again, it doesn't make any the, sense with if COVID. This is hazard. This the hazard insurance is because they're going right. off of the rules of a natural disaster, like a tornado, you know, crushing your house or a snowstorm and you know, crushing your roof. But COVID is an economic disaster. They haven't figured out how to handle this for econ for an economic injury. So they're just asking for property because that's all they know how to do. The legal department at SBA is requiring this because it is in your loan agreement. Okay. Yes. Yes. So home. Yeah. So you listen, if you rent and you don't have renter's insurance, I mean, I'm a licensed broker for 20 years. I'm just going to say renter's insurance is still important to have. And it's probably going to be a couple hundred bucks a year. Renter's insurance is very inexpensive. You should have it. I won't go into why, but I will tell you, you should have it <laughs> even without COVID and without the EIDL. Um, so, okay. So, so you said you have a trucking company. I provided coverage for one of my trucks waiting to hear back. Good luck with that. I'm not really sure that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work, knows? but if you have, if you don't have an office, then use your homeowners. If you have an office, you can get a business policy for your office and include contents. Include contents. Um, can I talk about the 4506T very quickly? About a yeah. strategy I'd like to recommend. So um, with this problem we're encountering literally just today and yesterday, Maybe. where people are getting the 4506T is incorrectly filled out by the SBA. And we've had more than a few people on comments and, and questions saying, well, I called the SBA and the agent said, just sign the, the, the form that's wrong and submit it because you don't want to slow down your process. Well, I'm sorry. You know why that's wrong? Because the SBA is going to send that wrong form to the IRS and come back with a transcript, no record found which is cause for automatic declination of your file. So that is really bad advice. Here's what Trevor's advice is. If you are on the portal and the 45060 is incorrect, do not sign it. Yeah. Do not sign it. Download the 45060 from the SBA website, fill it out side by side, right, Linda? Side, side by, by side. side with your personal tax, your, your tax return from 2019. If you filed a business tax return, did, which is an 1120 or 1120S I'm or 1065, or if you file a 1040, fill it out exactly as your tax return field appears, sign it and send it, email it in to pdcrecons at sba.gov. That's Peter, David, Charlie, Robert, Edward, Charlie, Oscar, Nancy, Stephen at sba.gov. Send that in. I promise you it will go in the system oh, here they and are. it will move your, your process along. For so 12 months project, they called today and sent me an email asking for documents and haven't, but I'm not sure what they want as they asked for 12 months. Yeah. All right. So Sarah, we did a We've whole, seen this a couple of times. We, we did a whole blog on it. I actually have the tab open. Um, I put it up last week too. I'm going to put it right here in the comments so you can go. And th this is not from the SBA. This is our own, um, 
what we put together so that people had some kind of uh, outline to to be prepared for the SBA with the 12 month projection. And in case uh, without opening up a can of worms, if you're wondering why they're asking for this, it's because they're moving away from the minimum credit score conundrum and looking at the borrower's ability to repay the EIDL loan. That's our assumption. That's an assumption of so that, well, no, the, that, that was in legislation of the ability to repay. Yeah, but we don't know how the SBA yeah. is applying that right. sentence. Yeah, there's, there's We just know, Sarah, that in a few of our clients' cases like yours, we've been requested to provide a uh, revenue projection um, and expenses um, and a business plan narrative. Yeah. So, you, you know, that that's cool, Brandon, you know, do what you got to do. Brandon, honestly, between you and me and the wall, I hope they just give you the money and they don't bust your chops about the insurance yeah. and bully for you. Cause we really look, we're not here to say to people, we, you know, we're, we want to argue with you so you don't get the money. We want the whole purpose of us handing out the advice that we hand out based on our actual experiences of working on over 150 of these transactions since last year is to provide a, a, a maybe a more sincere, more, more specific, more expert anecdotal experience. And it is only anecdotal because nobody can find out what's really going right. on at the scene, that's behind what, the scenes at the SBA. That's why even with uh, Heard That and Brandon and the hazard insurance, it's like, you know, we're not... We we're not standing on ceremony in any way, shape, or form. If your loan officer is directing you in one way and it's acceptable to you and you can fulfill those requirements, awesome, awesome. If you're having some challenges, again, we just we're sharing with you what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> I want to answer Amy's question. Can we go back yeah. to Amy? Yeah. Um, before I do that, real quick, the focus, by the way, on the portal. Stop focusing on the portal. Yeah, it's a whole process. When in doubt, if you are uploading a document and it says incorrect, resave the PDF because we've heard SBA agents cannot open some of the PDFs that's due to the security and firewall issues at SBA, not you. Email it into pdcrecons at sba.gov. It will not slow down your process. Okay, Amy's question. Phil, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. We're here. We see you. I see you. Can we go back to Amy's yes. question? What if you haven't filed the 2019 taxes, you automatically denied the idle increase? Do you want to answer the first question? Uh, you well, if you if you haven't filed your 2019 taxes, we recommend very strongly that you file your 2019 taxes if you want to continue with the process. That is all that I know about the that. EIDL program is underwritten from your 2019 tax return, yeah. which was your revenue for your business pre COVID. Yes, there were variations off of that for businesses that start near the end of 2019 or start in January 2020. But generally speaking, they're looking at 2019 tax return. Get that return filed. File electronically. Better yet, be like Raul. Make an appointment with your IRS office and hand file your tax return at the IRS office where they will stamp your return with a neat little IRS Ooh, stamp. Yeah. Okay. Neat little IRS stamp with the date and stamp received at IRS. People do this these all are, the time. These are our notes. Those are our like. notes. People do, <laughs> people do that all the time. I used to do it with mortgage clients in the Bronx when we were trying to get them approved and we needed a tax and the people hadn't filed. I, I would pick them up at their job and drive them to the IRS office and walk them into the IRS. Okay, hand them your, your tax return so I can get you your mortgage loan, get your house, get that return filed. But to answer your question also, Amy, will you be denied? Um, if your income on your 2018 tax return is sufficient, then the loan officer hopefully will use that. But you've got to point them in that direction. You need to send in an affidavit mm -hmm. explaining a very good reason, by the way, why you haven't filed your 2019 tax returns. Folks, mm -hmm. paying taxes is an important part of qualifying for approval on a federal government loan. If you are not paying your income taxes, yeah. Okay, so draw your own conclusions. If you have a very good reason, you know, like your accountant died of cancer, that happened to somebody told me that two mm -hmm. days ago. If something like that you have, then send an affidavit in. Dear SBA, please use my 2018 tax return because for this reason, 
I have not yet filed my 2019 return. In the meantime, Amy, get that 19 return filed, walk it into the IRS office, get it stamped, and submit that to the reconsideration team. Okay. Uh, Sarah, just to go back to what is their request for 12 2021. It's this year. Yeah. Yep. 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 January 1st. All right. So you're welcome, Amy. And uh, Michael. Ask Willie Nelson. Michael, first of all, that was hilarious about asking. He asked, he's like, can I, I ask, know. should I ask you about how my, they're going to check my credit? <laughs> all right. So it was uh, so nice to see everybody. We don't have any more questions. So I did not use hardly any of my banners. So um, just hang in there and. No one knows when the funding is. There are people who are at stages where they now are going to be waiting for the funding. So that's the next question. Um, we have clients at those stages. The blue right button. Now. Don't worry about the blue button anymore. The it works is, or it doesn't work. And the loan is in process means the loan is in process. They will ask for more documents. If you've already submitted, submitted submit them again. Don't sign forms that are pre-filled in with incorrect information. Hey, Danette. Submit a corrected form. Hello, Danette. Hey, so here's what you can expect on your here's EIDL question. process, which is this. Um, the loan officers are calling almost at the exact same time that you, they're sending you an email because they've got yeah. their, your file on their desk and they're working on it. And remember, they're overwhelmed. They've got lots of files, maybe hundreds of files to work on. So they've got limited time. Answer your phone. We know some folks can't always do that. We spoke to somebody the other day. She said, I work in a government office during the day and my phone is locked in my desk as per rules of the workplace. Okay. But generally speaking, if you want to get your EIDL loan approved, answer your phone. And the loan officer is going to call and introduce themselves and say, I'm working on your file. They may ask you some questions, but more importantly, they probably just say, I've just sent you an email. Please respond as quickly as possible. They are giving you seven days to respond. So don't lose your mind if you can't stuff, send stuff in in 12 seconds. Hey, You've got seven days to submit your documents. And here's what they're asking for. Insurance with property coverage. Often they're asking for photo ID. They're often asking for 2019 tax return. We've been told by loan officers, I have the transcript, but I don't have a copy of your 2019 tax return. Please send that in. Okay. They're asking for a voided check. There are for corporations, for LLCs. We did a they're post asking on this. for some don't go through because if okay. I forget one thing, I don't want it's there's a post in our community tab that is ac an actual email that was sent to one of our clients that has a list of requirements. I didn't even know we had that. Yes, look at this efficiency over here. Look at my it's in the it's in the community tab. Um, I'm, I'm tired. I know. Gary, I, I if you're asking what's a good choice for uh, business insurance. I personally love the Hartford insurance. That's just me because I used to own an agency and I love the Hartford. His it's Cox, also one of the largest carriers in the United States. Hiscox is great and they're online and their rates are great. H-I-S-C-O-X. By the way, just to be very clear, this is not an endorsement this, on we our are not part, paid for and we are not endorsing any of these companies. Hey, BG! All right. Um, uh, we had a question from someone. Oh, Joy. Joy started a business in 2019, had little revenue, applied for your ADL, got denied, but invited to apply for targeted. Will you be approved just using your personal information? Um, I think, well, I mean, so are you saying you got invited or are you just saying that because no, she was invited for the target? So yeah, Joy, so, yeah. generally speaking, we don't comment and targeted. We don't really have enough experience to share with you to give you what we would feel comfortable advising you. But with regards to your EIDL being denied, file a reconsideration. If you were denied, it was probably some technical issue. Um, as far as your income being low in 2019, that's not an unusual circumstance. Um, that in a circumstance like that, maybe you'll be like Sarah, where they might ask you for a business uh, revenue projection for 2021. Alex, I'm so happy you asked. We are pending approval on preferred partner uh, for with YouTube, we just got our clearance to be reviewed for the super chat button. Super chat, can't wait! Can't wait. Is that like super cat? No, super no. chat. Bye, Zoe. Bye, Zoe. Love you too. Okay, so, um, 
What else back we got? to uh, oh, oh, I had tests here. What does a CFET say? Uh, well, I'm trying to go in order here. Okay. So can you okay. chill? Got approval on five ten. Um, yeah. So this is there's a lot of scenarios that are like it's a waiting game. It's a waiting game. It's still only 36 days yep. since they opened it yep. up. So and this folks, is another hang in waiting there. game. Uh, don't know if you're going to. Yes, may, maybe. I don't know. It's you're a in the game. process. It's a good news, it's Stephanie. Good news, yeah. They pulled your credit. That's great news. That means somebody has your file. Somebody's working on your file. Yeah. You should probably get a call. I mean, that's typically what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. All right. So, yeah, see if I found out in recon EIDL law, file didn't go mm -hmm. to the loan officer does until it's completed. Yeah. So. Well, that's true. A CIF in basically every. Yep financing yep. situation you're welcome everywhere joy. the file does not go to an underwriter unless it's complete raul you're welcome okay. joy waiting for the increase and be no blue but yep that's okay uh call for unverified yeah the unverifiable information that's okay because all you have to do is show uh, documents that you're a legitimate business so they're going to ask you for your what your was it the corporation formation well hold on when you raul when you say you called unverified did they decline you if they decline you which is a common occurrence lately uh, they're declining loans when, and they're saying unverifiable information. They're all they're doing is looking to verify. They can't, for some reason, they can't locate it through public records for any variety of reasons, which you won't go into, which isn't always because of you. It could be because the agent is overwhelmed with time and doesn't have time. Uh, file a reconsideration and, um, you'll be able to submit your full document package, which we have outlined on our website yeah. and on our community page here right right abby um i don't stephanie wanna, you're welcome i don't want to not answer your question but we just went through this so i hate to tell you that you may have to go into the replay which was probably about minute 40 or 45 or something like that but also i've done uh, a 60 second video or a one minute 50 second video i did a short video on hazard insurance for uber and lyft drivers just yesterday i think it was yesterday uh, there's a t in the community tab. There's at least three hazard insurance posts that I've done on that. I have really done a lot of video on the insurance. So um, that is that. And did I miss something? What's Alex Express quarterly taxes? Oh, yeah. What, okay. Okay, Alex. Alex. So we are not a tax preparation service. Oh. We're not tax professionals. We do not comment on tax issues. Um, if your question, wait, yeah, you got denied for EIDL, be, that makes no sense. Yeah, that's not why you got denied. Yeah, I don't believe I've never seen that in 14 months as a reason. First of all, in in there is I've never seen a declination letter that says you're declined because you pay quarterly tax. Generally, the the reasons are the following. Well, he didn't in, pay his quarterly. He's saying he didn't. But pay. I've I've never seen an EIDL yeah. declined for that reason. Here are the reasons I've seen on declination letters. Insufficient credit, unverifiable information, economic injury, unsubstantiated. Those are the three standard declination phrases we're finding. They do not go into specifics. Like when you see unverifiable information, what does that mean? It happens to, to applications I submit. And my applications are 100 million thousand percent perfect. I'm a loan officer. And we've had situation where those have been declined for unverifiable information simply because SBA wants to see a tax return because the portal, when you do your original application online, doesn't allow for that. I don't know why they don't just change that system, but so. I just put the links for Abby for the short video for you. What else find. we got? Um, Angela so Young. Hi, welcome. if I want to change the amount right there. If you want to change the amount, will I be able to do so if that's already... Wait until the loan officer yeah. contacts you, Angela. Oh, yeah. that's Angela. Hi. <laughs> Angela, you missed it. Linda was talking about hanging out with some guys before. And I was like, where is Angela when you need her? Um, so Angela, the the we get we've seen this question asked frequently. People have oh, said, you know I've made a mistake. Um, what we're now seeing develop as these increases are hitting loan officer desk, they're calling somebody. They're sending an email and you get the chance to discuss the loan amount with the loan officers that you can fix it there. Kabina, yes, I got your email, Kabina. You're a rock star. Thanks for signing that, that tax return and uploading it. We're going to be working on your file tomorrow, Kabina. Thank you. Uh, Kashif got denied because of credit. 
Uh, I don't know if you've seen our video on writing a credit explanation letter. You shouldn't stop. Don't stop. Don't take no for an answer, Keep Kashif. File you are entitled to this money. File a reconsideration. You, have to, you will win. Unfortunately, uh, so there's a couple of things. Number one, it's a good thing. They're not just seeing the credit score and denying, and that's the end of the story. Um, they are today. today they are they are working on uh, wanting to see delinquent credit explanation letters or whatever they're calling it. But unfortunately, but fortunately, you have to sell it, you know, because they're uh, and this goes back to when we started an hour and five minutes ago where Trevor said the system is so overwhelmed that if there is anything that is not consistent with the requirements of their process, they're going to deny it and move it so they can say, hey, I worked on 157 not, files today. They're not denying it because of you. They're denying it because they can't technically get to an approval status on the file. It could be any number right. of items having nothing to do with your credit worthiness or your approvability, which is why we say follow Trevor's golden rule. Linda, tell them what they've won. Trevor's golden always rule is apply. And in this apply. case, always file a reconsideration if you were denied, and especially if you were denied for credit, especially if you sustained an economic injury, which is the basis of the EIDL program, except you have to actually sort of kind of know or become a loan officer by way of knowing how to organize your file and be as succinct as possible to lead them down the road of approval for you to get your money. They're not going, um, it's not like having a, a counselor or a, an advocate or like the local SBA no. CBDC office or, or someone whatever, like us where they, they, they coach you along. Mm -hmm. That's not happening here. It's either correct or not or incorrect. And they've got to move the file off their desk. They're under pressure of a number of files to clear and move through the system. So, yeah, we have a lot. We know exactly what you have to do. You have to just I did a short video on this as well, uh, which basically how you you can't not fill it uh, completed. Do not send it in blank. You can't you, you have to send it in and you can't send it in blank. You just have to put your name at the top. Uh, and you have to fill well, in. We, watch our video, Dstech. We did a video there that tells a, you exactly how to complete a 22. I'm going to have to find the video, which was uh, one of the shorts. Well, it's in our playlist. I know, but the shorts video, you know, they're under 60 seconds. And I actually have a little screenshot of the where you fill in NA and where there's an amount. You put zero and you sign and you date it. And so you just have to fill it out, but it's just going to be it, essentially this follows my NA. rule of application preparation, which is don't leave blanks. If something doesn't apply to you on an application, you, write N.A. People did this on their EIDL portal applications last year. They continue to do it where it says gross revenue in 2019 cost of goods sold. They leave that blank. Well, listen, if your cost of goods sold was zero, guess what you should put on the application? Hey, Melissa. Zero. You should put zero. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So don't here, leave blanks. Don't leave blanks. Um, I have to find that. I have to find that video. But if you look in our playlist, it's there. Who's Tess? Tess says hello. Oh, thank you. Uh, but no, there's a question here on a floater. If you have renter's insurance, you don't need a floater for business personal property. Just get property on your renter. That's all they're looking done, for, Eugene. And it's done. There you go. Can we go back to Tess Mana? Because. Uh, um, I, Tess had something very important to share. She's right here, Tess Mana. Oh, I don't, Michael. That's a that's a show for another another. Actually, person. Michael, <laughs> at that Michael actually would be a tragic mistake. No, Ma we do people. not want the SBA to hand these files out to banks. The banks screwed up the PPP last year, and they screwed it up even worse this year. Banks have no business being involved with SBA loans. Okay. All right. What, what, what happened to Tess right Tess here? Tess okay. says, uh, able to request a change. I was able to request a change. My loan officer. Bingo. Thank you, Tess. Angela. Tess gets the gold star. If Angela is still Angela, here. Angela, read what Tess wrote. Yeah. Um, so Mark B. Hey, Mark. Mark's a happy guy. Look, I love, your, I love your picture. Do I apply for grant? No, Something. you cannot apply for it. You will be declined. Yes. No, no, no. Oh, wait. Why they're the sending end? you an invitation? We don't know, Mark. We got one also. Our office is not located in a low income. Oh, community. yeah. It, it was actually our, where uh, this is not our office. This is our home. Where our office is located in the next town over. How far is it? 10, 6.5 miles. 
No, no. How far is the, our office from oh, the low across income? across the street. From the low income community. <laughs> across the street. You yelled at me about that last night. Yeah, because well, there's purple all around us, except for well, literally. Well, that's because you have a purple shirt. The street we're on, there's like four of our houses, of the houses. So, Mark, are... um, you got an invitation for the targeted the IDL advance. So many people. I, I saw three of them show up in emails yesterday for three of our clients who are in very high income communities BG you should is not get it don't file for it. we're all waiting that's the name of the game right now every uh, there i think almost every single question except for insurance was when is the we money wait. coming we wait we have to wait everything every step is then we wait and unfortunately it does you know I, it, it's not the answer you want to hear it's not it's not the answer it's not sexy it's not exciting it's not optimistic it's we wait but I, if anyone has ever had to buy a house, if anyone's been uh, you know, lucky enough to be able to buy a house, and if you go, you find the house, from the date you find the house and the closing, depending on what state you're on, I guess. By the way, BG, just see you. Months. Hold on, hold on. We just got an email from our client who- uh, Thank you, BG, for the review. Can can I share this? This is yes. with BG. This is, yeah. this is, see who it is? See who it's from? It's from, yes. Okay. He got his email just now that his- five thousand dollars supplemental advance is approved and we clicked on the yes button on that on saturday saturday so they're still waiting a lot of waiting and he was already that same business Jeff, was, was approved already for the do. restaurant relief grant fund. pizza is coming thanks to jeff we will have to do a zoom with you while we eat pizza <laughs> okay uh tamara Seymour. tamara oh tamara Okay, sorry, tomorrow. I got denied because I got max six by one or plus ten. Should I do it? I would. I don't know what that means tomorrow. Where you were denied? Were you denied last year, or you're denied now when you request the incre increase? If you could be more specific and ask that question again, please. Yeah, love it. Let us know. Because um, she, I'm no longer at the location venue I rented from. Do I still? Uh, you're the insurance broker. Well, you I mean, you did you. Do you have the loan? I don't. I don't even remember what your if this is how related. What your other comments might be to connect this. Um, if you have the loan, then you are going to need the insurance, and you will want to get the insurance for the premise, the location, wherever you are. Generally speaking, can you go to Angela's question right here because it kind of answers um, Kashif's question. Generally speaking, Kashif, we're seeing the SBA is requiring insurance with property coverage. So, so get that. So Angela, bingo, she got her insurance from Hiscox. Yes. And uh, you should have it. Do not assume, Angela, they have it in the file. Have it at the yeah. ready and assume they will ask for it again. Anytime the SBA asks you for something, don't let your initial reaction be, they have it already. I never received the loan. Just send okay. it in. Just send it in what they ask you for. All right. But if when you get your loan... Uh, when you get your loan and you, if you need to prove the insurance, uh, submit the insurance. Okay. Tamara responded. So, so you were denied now for the increase file a reconsideration immediately, yeah. which will allow you tomorrow to put in all of your documents. Um, Linda can point you in the direction of where we have that documents list and our reconsideration is a download on our website. Which how for, to apply for an e ideal reconsideration. And we have oh, multiple we have three videos. videos here on our YouTube channel on on step by step, and we've had people compliment us saying, Holy cow, I did everything you said, and it actually works. Yes, we've had funny thing about that. Yeah, I requested increase in January, just got tonight now because I applied. Right. Okay, um, we have at least well, we have a whole playlist on EIDL loan grants and reconsideration, but there are definitely because I've done this in just this past week, I don't know how many times. I copied and pasted three reconsideration videos we've done that are a checklist, step-by-step, -step, and how to write a reconsideration letter. So those are in the um, either the Advancing with Financing playlist or the EIDL playlist. Uh, all right. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? If we haven't answered your questions, we uh, in every video, there is a link that has a, a a scheduling link so you can schedule a 15 minute free call with with us you talk with trevor and you ask a couple of questions as far as 15 20 minutes you know we'll get you on clarifying 
what's transpired, what is amiss, what you could do to course correct. And, you know, some people either hire us or they go on their way with finishing up whatever they started. Uh, Using the expert advice we give you. Yes. So um, uh, we answered this question early on at, at about, I think, minute 40 ish. Um, basically they are not looking at the amount of the insurance for the property coverage. So don't worry about that. Mrs. Perez can't really answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we've You'll be able to apply for the 5,000 Mrs. Perez when they send in the invitation for that. And when you do get that invitation, they're going, that means you've been approved for the targeted advance. Yeah. Right. And then what happens is you're going to open it. You'll click through when you get the invitation for $5,000. It takes 14 seconds. They ask you, do you want it or not? Yes or no. You click on yes. And then it says, we're going to use the information you provided for the targeted advance. Bye, Teresa. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Good night, Teresa. Um, so, uh, Tamara, you only need one insurance policy. You don't need every type of insurance. If you have a restaurant policy, that's fine as long as it has property. So that's that's that. Pamela got approved for EIDL advance. Yeah, it's, um, we don't we don't really get involved with EIDL. No, I can answer that. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? We 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 are experts in EIDL. But the this is with the advance. Okay. But yeah, you but can the pay. advance yeah. is going to fall under Pamela under the uh, loan agreement for an EIDL loan for use of funds. So here's the answer to your question. Can you use the funds to replay pay loan on a vehicle already paid? So the vehicle, what you're saying, it sounds like is the vehicle's oh. paid off already and you want to make yourself whole on paying that. I mean, it sounds like you want to take a salary. So yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as if the loan is, uh, thanks, Melissa, you're the best too. Uh, as far as um, if the loan is not paid off yet, you can only use the funds from an EIDL loan to pay off a debt if it is a short-term debt, meaning less than 12 months it comes due. What um, What do you mean apply to two different companies? Okay, well, Asif, this um, is a common misconception. If you have, if you own multiple companies, yes, you can apply as long as each company files its own tax return if you have multiple income streams that are being reported on schedule c of your tax return then you have one application and it's under your name not under the company names because you are the business essentially because these are just income streams so i hope that answers your question um i think you're welcome pamela and I think that does it for us this evening. And we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in with us and for trusting us with your questions. Uh, it does mean a lot to us. I know sometimes we can't answer all the questions, but we have 14 months of managing real case files of real applicants, borrowers, business owners, and talking to multiple SBA agents every single day. So we have seen all kinds of experiences, mainly with the EIDL loan. Um, there are, the SBA has been so, it's been so troublesome because they'll try to introduce something to streamline. And I don't know where they're getting their feedback to do these technical type advances to then just complicate everything and have the glitches that have transpired to put everybody in a panic and just be going berserk on reddit and all other places with you know what's happening and what do i do now and why is this happening and what do i do now um be aware of people who are talking about spectacular you, controversy and scary and all the bad things that are happening those people are not helpful yeah Stay positive. Yeah. Millions of businesses have been funded mm -hmm. with this program. You will get your money. It's a process. Hang in there. Tamara, you asked a moment ago, you filed the reconsideration. Now you just wait forever. No, you're not going to wait forever. Actually, they are working very quickly over the last few weeks. We've yeah. seen dramatic improvements in the response the, the, time. the word that we had heard was that they were up 
updating their computer systems, but mm -hmm. it was sort of like the storm before the calm where th even the phones were down, right? For like a day or something yeah. that was insane. There's been all kinds of stuff, but it, listen, it, there's a lot going on, Thank a lot you, of moving John. parts. Um, Mrs. Thank Perez you, said, uh, I'm sorry, uh, wrong banner, but same So person. Mrs. Perez, so, wait, no, go back go to back. the other banner. Yeah. Yeah. Does both? Oh. Yeah, so two Schedule Cs mean yeah. you file one loan application, Ms. Perez. It's under your name, your Social Security number, mm. and you put all of your income together. That's how you do it. Yeah. Okay. So I think that was it. Oh, should I wait uh, to send my insurance or can I send it before they request it? Why not? I mean, what, you have nothing to lose. No, not it's, even. It's yeah. not going to. If not, you're. People are terrified to send stuff in afraid it's going to screw up their system. It's not. The system is yeah. what it is. You, you send it in. Yeah. There was someone. That, we don't know the turnaround time. Um, depends. It varies widely from one file to the next. It, it comes yeah. down to who's working on your file, how many files they have to work on, their competence level, uh, what they're working from home. Do they have a boss who's breathing down their neck? I mean, all the same pressures you all go through when you're working for somebody. Eugene, we covered this. Uh, we, I've done a couple videos on it. Just uh, if you have homeowners or renters insurance and you have contents that should suffice, submit that with, of course, the effective period that uh, uh, an in-force active of policy period. Um well, oh, so now he's asking where would it go? Yeah. Send it to PDC recons at SBA.gov. Yeah. yeah so, so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you, Angela, for joining us. John Dunn. So, if my portal had said loan processing. No, do not follow up. Yeah. You will be frustrated. On the other hand, if you want to submit documents, John Dunn, by all means, submit them. Submit a completed 4506T. Submit your insurance. Submit your 2019 tax return. Submit a driver's license. Submit a voided check. It does not hurt the process at all. Why would you submit two insurance policies? Um, they may just say one works and one doesn't, but uh, if you I'm have not a, even sure why you would have if, two. If you have a business policy, send that in. As long as it has property coverage. As long as it has property coverage. If you don't have property coverage, call your agent, get property coverage. If, especially if you have an office and you have business insurance. Um, so, so there you go. Um, I think, yes, Shannon, Shannon, you are not alone. Not alone. You, it seems like it because you're doing your loan, you know, um, we're doing almost 200 loans. So we talk to so many different people every single day. So, um, but if you don't want to feel alone, visit our channel more often because there's a ton of comments of people that you're not alone. <laughs> so, all right. I think that we are going to end the show and we really appreciate you guys visiting. We're going to do this as long as you guys feel like you're getting something out of it. We'll continue to do oh, it. But on can, WTF can, Wednesday. can well. you close with Mrs. Perez's comment? Mrs. Perez, I'm in love with you right now. Right now, I'm in love with you, Miss Perez. Angela, Angela, I'm sorry. I'm now in love with Mrs. Perez. I had already <laughs> sent in the tax reform two months there ago. They sent me go. an email Saturday to sign the same, send the same document, and I didn't question. I signed it and submitted it. Yay! I'm sorry, but I like confetti flashing through like the air. I like spooky ones comment. Thank you, spooky one. Wait, he's not talking about me. <laughs> All right. We love you folks. Thank you so much Thank for tuning in. Thank you so in. much. We and, will and see you next week. Thanks for embracing our passion and understanding our passion that um, when it looks like we're arguing with each other, we're not. Yeah. And, and when we're arguing with you, we're not. We just, we care so deeply. We want you to get the money. Hang yeah. in there. Rohan, they're not specifying an amount of insurance. So just so you know, they're not specifying how much property coverage. But I got to go. I'm getting kicked under the table. So it's we time to say goodnight, see folks. See you next week. Ciao, ciao.